This is our Orion 28 millimeter lens, and you can see the PL mount flange here. And literally what back focus is, is the distance that relates from the optical mechanical datum of this system to where the image plane is. So if you have a piece of film, or if you have a, your digital sensor back here, there's a known standard that the optical system expects to be from the image plane. And the purpose of this is to set that spacing, set that distance. So typically there's a known standard, at least from this resting position, this resting datum to the image plane, that's 52 millimeters, 52.00 millimeters for a PL mount. Mm -hmm. uh, some mirrorless camera systems, such as a Nikon Z mount, Sony E mount, Canon RF mount, those all have a back working distance between 18 and 20 millimeters. And that means from where the mechanical resting point of the lens is to the image plane is much shorter. So if you have a lens that expects a longer back working distance, you can easily adapt it to a camera that has a shorter back working distance because normally that resting position would be about here and the image plane would be here. So you can make a mechanical mount adapter, uh, much like this one that I'm gonna pull out of the shelving. Shout out to the homies at Mofage. Mofage. So this would go to a mirrorless camera like a Sony E and then that amount of space is filled in by this mechanical block here. Mm -hmm. But where things can get messed up is if that position is incorrect, something's gonna go wrong. By the because micron scale. On a very, very finite, minimal scale, almost imperceptible to the human eye, we're talking like a human hair or smaller. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we all have different hair sizes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but generally a human hair is a pretty good reference because you got you all out there probably have way more hair than I do. I'm losing it. But the key point here is it has to do with how far the optics are to the image plane. And when we're building a lens or calibrating it, we make sure that there's shims that live under the mount that put this part exactly 52.00 millimeters from the image plane. And we calibrate that and assure that you're gonna get the best performance by adjusting that mm -hmm. because there's minute differences between every lens. You know, everybody likes to think, oh, every lens design, all lenses that come off the factory line are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is that they're all a little bit unique because there's just tolerances when there's, you know, 14 or more pieces of glass that are making up a system. Mm -hmm. There's minute differences between each of the parts yep. and minute differences between each of the airspace between the parts. Mm -hmm. But a well tolerance design will make sure that they're generally coming off very much the same as our lenses are here at mm -hmm. Atlas. But when you make the mount, you're gonna make sure that that is exactly in the right place for the image plane to get the best picture. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple ways to do that. One, if you have a reference lens that's a null lens, you can send collimated light into that lens and then you can use an adjuster to check the back focus by moving the lens slightly and you can calibrate your back working distance by deviating that spacing. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's kind of complicated. So what we like to do when we're checking the back focus for a camera, such as this red Komodo here with a PL mount on it, shout out red and shout out to our friends at Denz in Germany who make this amazing calibration tool that we call the Denz FDC Multi. So why is this important? This is a really cool tool because it will triangulate using two different rays, the exact distance from the PL mount flange to the image plane. And we can turn that on in a second here. Let's go ahead and set the camera down. So mm -hmm. you can see that this is just a, a thing that looks like a lens and you can see the two ports that send the rays into the lens port. And by adjusting this dial Nominal is 52 here. By adjusting this dial, you can either bring the rays further or closer in the way that it's triangulating. And that'll give you a very, very precise measurement of how much you should adjust the back focus on your camera with little, very thin metal washers. We're talking like aluminum foil thin yep. that we call shim. Everybody out there, you should be able to see the feed from our red Komodo with a PL mount 
Mm -hmm. and that has the DENS FTC attached. And you can see that red line that's in between those green lines. And you can see that right now it's right in the middle of the plus and the minus. So it's perfectly mm -hmm. minutely it's like centered. You know, centered, yeah. So if it's not centered, you know that your back focus is off. Mm -hmm. And we've seen some, I'll just loosen this really quick. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see like how crazy off it can be. Mm -hmm. So I've seen some that are like that, mm -hmm. uh, which is like significantly off. Let me turn that back on for you. So we'll just put it back in its port. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about the dial gauge on the front here is that when you're perfectly calibrated, you want the 52 red line on the top to match the red line on the top of the camera. And that should be here on the camera. And it should be like that on the dens, but you can see that this one is off by 30 microns. So there's 10, 20, 30. You'd wanna add 30 because we're on the positive side there. So you'd wanna add 30 microns of shim inside of this PL mount adapter that's on our red Komodo here. True. If there's any other questions about back focus, come see us on a Wednesday lens day. We showed you the DENS FDC on a red Komodo. We got our Atlas scope plate on. Hit us up, shoot us an email, come say hi. You never call. Have a great Tuesday. Peace Have out.